Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITG Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and uh, today I have brought another very interesting problem for all of you from Pathfinder. This is uh, rotational mechanics check your understanding problem number 13 and uh, apart from that I will be also presenting two more problems uh, to illustrate a very nice concept uh, called cone of friction which reduces your effort for doing many problems significantly. So one pro sample problem I am going to solve and in the end I am also going to give you a practice problem. So, uh, so please stay tuned it, uh, until end to make sure that you understand this concept right and uh, uh, you make it part of your uh, toolbox. Okay, so without much ado let me straight away get into the problem. So here is the problem. An attempt is being made to roll a rigid sphere of mass m up a vertical wall. So we are trying to roll this up on the vertical wall. So maybe in the side view if you want to see, we are applying some force so that it rolls up the wall. Okay. Coefficient of friction between the sphere and the wall is mu. Okay. So there is some coefficient of friction here and that coefficient of friction is mu. Find the minimum force applied on the sphere to roll it up. Gravity that is acceleration to gravity is given as g. So if you want you can give it a try and I will get into my analysis right away. Okay. So let's see. So first thing I want to tell, teach you here is uh, the concept of cone of friction. So what do we understand by cone of friction? See, whenever we have a rough surface, so normal reaction will be acting perpendicular to this, right? And what can be the maximum value of friction? You know that friction cannot exceed mu n. So this is the maximum possible value of friction, right? Coefficient of friction. And uh, what is the net contact force? So net contact force is the resultant of the normal reaction and mu n. So you can see that when the friction, uh, I mean, uh, mean, could be less than mu n also. If it's limiting, then it will be mu n. So you can see that in when the friction is mu n, then the re resultant force lies uh, on uh, here at some angle phi, so that tan phi is equal to mu, right? Because this is mu n and this is n. And uh, depending on how you apply the force on this block, so resultant contact force will always lie within this cone. Okay. So if it is at the verge of slipping, then it will be on the surface of this cone. And if it is not at the verge of slipping, then this force will be less than mu n and then the force will be somewhere lying within the cone, right? So we call this as cone of friction and we know that the, the net resultant force that is the resultant of normal reaction the friction force must lie within this cone or on the surface of this cone if the object is either on the verge of slipping uh, or uh, uh, it is already slipping, right? So that's what I've written. So net resultant contact force from a surface always lies within the cone of semi vertex angle phi which is equal to tan inverse mu further if the friction is limiting or kinetic this resultant force lies entirely on the surface of cone okay now before i solve the actual problem i have given a sample problem so, so as to make you understand the concept in a simpler context and then we'll uh, extend this same idea to the current problem so simpler problem for understanding the concept, how to apply the concept, okay. So what's the question? Find the minimum force required to move a block without rotation. This I have added on a rough horizontal surface having coefficient of friction mu. So we are not worried about rotational effects, torques and all. We just want to make it slip on the horizontal, rough horizontal surface. And the force can be applied at any angle. And we want to find out what's the minimum required value of this force. So how do we do? See. When the block is at the verge of slipping, the three forces acting on it are what? One is the mg downward and then there is a, a resultant contact force. Uh, let's say r vector is the resultant contact force and then th there is our applied force. And since it's at the verge of slipping, so there is equilibrium we can say. And therefore all these three should form a closed triangle, right? So we should have a closed triangle from this. And we need to minimize f under these constraints, okay? So let's see how to do this problem without uh, uh, using too many equations. In fact, I'll be doing it purely using geometry without any equations. So you see, so mg is downwards and reaction force, we know that it will be on the surface of this cone at an angle phi. So that's what I've done. So mg is like this and reaction force is at an angle phi. And now I want to close this triangle such that the third side is smallest possible side. So how to do that? You know that mg is a fixed vector whose magnitude is also fixed and uh, direction is also fixed. So this length is fixed, right? <coughs> length of this vector is fixed and the direction of this vector, r vector is fixed, although its length is not fixed. Its length can vary, but its direction is fixed. And I want to close the triangle with the shortest possible side. So what you can do is you can drop a perpendicular on this, right? 
So that's what I've written. So constraint on R is only that it must be at an angle phi with the vertical. Okay. And excluding F, I have shown the other two forces. Now, how to complete this triangle with smallest possible third side? So simplest answer is you can just drop a perpendicular from the tail of MG. You can drop a perpendicular on the direction of R. Okay. So we draw a perpendicular from tail of MG to the direction of along R. And now we can see since this is 90 degree angle, so this F is simply what? This is mg sin phi, okay? And we know the value of uh, tan phi, right? So tan phi is mu, so sin phi will be what? So tan phi is mu, so this is perpendicular upon base. So perpendicular is mu and base is uh, 1. So root, so sin phi becomes mu upon under root of mu square plus 1, right? If tan phi is mu. And then uh, this f sin, uh, f, uh, I mean, mg sin phi simply becomes mu mg upon under root of mu square plus 1, right? So that's the answer to our uh, sample problem, right? So I hope you understood this one. And if you have understood this, then the next one should be fairly easy, okay? I mean, uh, the actual problem, that's the Pathfinder challenge. We are going to utilize exactly the same concept. So let's see how to do that one. Okay. Now coming to the current problem, see, uh, here is our wall. And here there is sphere and there will be some normal reaction and I know that the net resultant contact force from this must lie within again the cone of friction right. So here there will be a cone of friction such that semi vertex angle tan phi is equal to mu okay. And uh, so again this is a case of equilibrium under action of three forces right. What are those forces? One is gravity, other is the reaction force from here and the third one is uh, our applied force which I have to minimize. So again I am doing the same thing. So mg vector I have drawn vertically, r is at an angle phi with the horizontal in this case, right? Because normal reaction is horizontal, so phi is the angle with. And now I need to uh, complete the triangle with the shortest possible side. mg is vertical, total reaction in this direction, so I drop a perpendicular. So this is my required force, right? So, uh, okay, and this is what then, this is phi, so this angle is phi, so this is simply mg cos phi. And mg cos phi is simply now tan phi is mu, so cos phi is 1 upon under root of mu square plus 1 and a simple cute little geometric solution we have. So I hope you uh, like this solution, uh, this is a cute little way of doing this problem. Uh, now uh, there are some more things that can could be asked in this question. For example, we could ask that where uh, we do we need to apply this force. Of course we have found the magnitude of this force, but uh, we also need to uh, suppose specify where exactly this force sh should be applied. So now if a, th a body is under rotational equilibrium under action of three forces, then all those three forces must be concurrent. Why? Because if they are not current, then uh, from the point of intersection of two of those forces, uh, we can try to find out the torque of the third force, which will be obviously non-zero if the third force doesn't pass through that. That means what, so what should be the direction of this force, see? So mg, the line of mg you extend and the line of reaction you extend and their intersection point is there. So, and uh, now once you have the intersection point, so you need to draw parallel to this, right? So you draw parallel to this. So you should apply the required force along this line, okay? So that could be another part trying to find the coordinates of the point where uh, this uh, force needs to be applied. Another interesting part could be uh, what if uh, the intersection point doesn't lie within the sphere, but you have to apply the force uh, in the sphere only, right? So for example, suppose the cone of friction, uh, the this uh, let us say is very wide and you can have the intersection point somewhere over here. Let us say coefficient of friction is very large uh, or uh, yeah. So uh, you have a very wide cone of friction. So obviously uh, you, if you are trying to find out the force, suppose this goes outside the sphere. So obviously you will not be able to find a point on the sphere. So in that case, uh, where exactly should you apply so as to uh, make this uh, sphere rest? Um, uh, so that's another uh, nice question that you can try thinking of uh, what happens when you have to apply the force on the surface only but the intersection point is going out of the surface so what should we do in that case okay because this result uh, uh, will not uh, hold then right uh, if that constraint is imposed so that's another interesting problem that you can do and just to ensure that you grab this concept properly. So I have given you a practice problem. I will not be giving a solution to this one. This is directly from Morin. So Morin has of course used the uh, uh, free body diagram method for solving this one. But uh, I want you to do this problem uh, uh, with our cute little trick that we have just learned. And uh, I am sure if you are able to do this, uh, this, you'll, the, this concept is going to stay with you and you will be able to apply in various uh, situations. Okay. So, uh, 
that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed my explanation and if you if you did enjoy my explanation please do give a thumbs up to this video and please share this video as much as possible through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever medium you use for networking with your fellow students and most importantly if you're not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video every day thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you very much